All right. All right. Okay, go ahead, guys. Um, can you tell us whatever you can tell us on how Chris Olave and Ryan Ramchek are doing? Uh, Ryan will be listed as out, okay. um, so he won't he won't travel with the team. Uh, and Chris Olave is good to go. Good to go and play. Okay. Um, what with, with Ryan? I know he's been dealing with that for a long time. Is this just the wear and tear of the season, or did he actually have a no? This is this happen? this this is something that you know he, he's been he's been battling through this for yeah. uh, you know a few seasons now, um, and I think it just got to the point where you know it was going to be hard for him to go out there and do what he needed to do. So uh, kind of let it get some rest, and you know hopefully you know being out last week, being out uh, this week. You know, we'll, we'll see where we're at next week. So, but uh, but it, it it wasn't an incident or, or an episode. It, it's uh, just something he's been dealing with. And how'd you feel about the way that Landon Young stepped in last week? Yeah, look, I thought right? yeah, I thought he I thought he did a nice job in there. You know, um, <clears throat> and so look, he'll have another big challenge this week. So um, he's got to step up and play well. How vastly different is it for somebody at that position to come in in the middle of a game versus having a week of practice to kind of get ready? Yeah, look, I mean, well, look, if, if the practice wasn't important, we wouldn't be doing it, you know. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, you want to get the full week of practice. Uh, but but I think that's that's kind of the nature of our league in that, you know, there's a lot of times that you have to get yourself prepared and get yourself ready to play, even though you might not get, you know, a significant amount of those reps. Um, and so, um, you know, that's the challenge with, you know, when you're a backup player in our league uh, is not getting all the reps and yet it being expected to go out and perform at a high level. Coach, I don't know if it gets easier or harder for quarterbacks, but one way or the other, Stafford this many years in still is a guy who's willing to stand in there, take a hit to make a, make a play work. Can you just talk about his toughness? Yeah, look. Um, well, A, I'd say I think he's playing exceptionally well right now. Um, you know, I think uh, his his location, his timing, his accuracy, I think all that's been, you know, really outstanding. And, and he's made some throws in the face of, you know, some pretty good heat at times and, and is able to stick the ball in there. He throws the ball from a lot of different, you know, arm angles, can make that off-platform throws. So, um He's been a really good player in our league for a long time. Super Bowl winning quarterback, um, and and yeah, to you know specifically last year to play through some of the injuries that he went through last year, uh, and it looks like he's playing you know healthy this year, uh, and he's playing at a really high level. How's the running back challenge you all defensively, like Williams? Well, look, I think I think the player and the scheme are both um, you know tough to tough to deal with. Um, you know, they give you a lot of eye candy, you know, in terms of what they do formationally, shift, motion, all that kind of stuff, try to get you, you know, looking at the wrong thing and get yourself out of position. Uh, I think their runners run extremely hard, um, you know, and, and, and they've been doing a good job of creating some holes in the running game. So uh, we definitely know that that's, you know, something that they're going to try to do. Um, and, and they've been really effective with it, particularly in the last, call it last month of the season. Were you looking for a gunner when you guys added Isaac Adam late last season, or or did you? Well, see look, I think I think initially our thought was this is a, a backup corner uh, that you know has some skill set that kind of mirrors and matches a little bit of the way we want to play defense. Uh, but I think you know the initial thought, yeah, was that you know he's going to come in and be a backup corner and be a uh, a really good four core special teams player for us, which he's done that and exceeded probably what our expectations would have been for him as a corner. And yeah, I mean, you see, you probably don't see a lot of guys make it to a fifth team in five years. I mean, uh, but he kept getting opportunity after opportunity. What, look, I think. What do you think? Is well, missing and what do you think is hitting? Well, look, I think um, it was the right fit and the right opportunity. I guess is is probably the best way to the best way to say it. Um, you know. He's a guy that has just come to work every single day and works extremely hard to improve at his craft. He takes it seriously. Um, he's taken to the coaching. He tries to do it exactly the way that we ask him to do it. Um, and he's having success doing it that way. When you have a compressed schedule like this, coupled with the West Coast trip, I mean, do you have to just burn the midnight oil? Do you eliminate some things in the schedule? I mean, how, does, how do you make it work? 
Well, look, the most important thing is you try to make the schedule player friendly because the most important thing for our players is to get their rest, get their recovery, get their bodies back on a short week. So that's that's number one. Obviously, um, with with the number of reps that you're getting, um, the volume you know has to be scaled back a little bit in terms of what you're doing schematically. Um, you know, but yeah, I think um, I think it's it's you know probably particularly hard on the, on the you know coaching staff trying to you know we came in here Sunday right after the giant game started working on uh, the Rams and um, I guess I'll best way to say is I'll get a nice little nap on the flight out there. That's the best thing about traveling as far as we're traveling is we get a nice little nap on the plane. Well, you're you gonna travel take, take some days off after DA. Yes. Get those guys a yeah, the, the players will have some time off. You know, obviously Christmas coming up uh, next Monday, so we've kind of got the schedule that way to uh, give them some time off, let them have some time with their families for Christmas, and then we'll be right back at it. You know, really probably on Tuesday. Will you travel back tomorrow night or Friday morning? We're gonna come back tomorrow. Yeah. I mean, I know. You I think don't want I think in a typical situation, if this was a you know potentially a Sunday night game, um, and we were playing the next. The next week, I think, you know, there's a thought to, you know, staying overnight, getting a good night's sleep, and then traveling back the next day. But uh, with it being a Thursday night game, we have a few days off. I think myself and everybody else is more interested in kind of getting back here, and uh, we'll have plenty of time to get our rest after that. And I know you don't want a preemptive excuse or anything like that, but I mean, do, does the distance should the distance of travel be considered on on Thursday nights? I mean, is there is there too far to travel in a short week? Look, I, I think it, that's a that's a decision that's way above my pay grade, yeah. you know. So we play the games they tell us to play, and uh, we get ourselves ready the best we can, and and uh, try to put the best product out on the field we can. You might have been asked about this, but Sean McVay, you know, obviously has had enormous success since he came in the league. You all matched up with him a few times over the years. Have you seen? an evolution of what they're doing offensively? Or? Well, look, I think the core principles are still there. Um, you know, there's probably a few things that, that maybe are a little bit different than uh, maybe when we played them back in 2018, but there's still a lot of, like, you know, similarities. We played them last year. There's a lot of similarities, you know, in terms of what they're doing. So I think the core of what they are and who they are and how they play, uh, you know, really hadn't changed much. Uh, some of the pieces have changed. Go back to their running game, specifically Byron Williams. What's allowed him to go in recent weeks, second half of the season, I guess, from kind of a bit of an unknown guy to somebody who's become kind of a star. Yeah, look, I mean, it's probably a better question inside their building to be able to answer. You know, I, I don't know what that reason is. I do know that um, that they're, they're, they're running the ball exceptionally well right now. Um, I think he's a big part of it. Um, obviously, I think the scheme has something to do with it, and I think what they're doing up front and how well they're playing up front has something to do with it. So uh, in terms of the specifics of what, what's allowed him to do that, I, I can't answer that. You guys control your own destiny. Yeah, look, you, you, you play this game to be in, in the, you know, have the opportunities that, that we have. And so I think we're fortunate to be in that position. But, you know, really the focus really is, you know, trying to go out to L.A. Uh, against a good football team, you know, uh, on a short week and, and, and try, to, try to get a win. How are you feeling about the progress of Kendra Miller? Um, I feel good. Um, you know, he was able to get some limited practice in this week. Um, and... Uh, you know, will be available to us on game day if we need him. All right, thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Steve.